Live in Shadowmere Studios, this is the Talkie Box Podcast. Bet you can't eat just one. No, no you no. can't. I don't think you can eat any of them. Mm-hmm. No, probably not. I mean, like unless you have like a hard drive, like a little flash drive or something, like download it on there right. and then ate them. But at that point, you're just eating I mean, ones and zeros. Five out of five doctors don't recommend that. Five out of five? Five out of five. A solid five out of Did five. Did you ask five doctors about it? Where is the medical you're journal where up. this study is listed? I need to know. I'm your host, Dave. Well, I would recommend I eating as many Wikipedia as you page. can. Wikipedia. Definitely. And reliable source. with me tonight is Jason. I am Jason. And Justin. Wait, me? Yep. All right. That, yep, that's me. And Kate. I'm Kate. And uh, now that we've got done the introduction of the show... Yeah, you guys were I'm Jason! The entire time. We love you, Dave. Yeah. God, that hair. It's pulled back. Yeah. Mm. It's still just entrancing. I'm going to cut it soon. No, you're not. I am. You're a fucking... He keeps lying to me. And I'm going to donate it. I'm waiting for it to warm up. You have an excuse every time. It's every the time. same excuse. <laughs> and it just seems to pile up, doesn't it, Dave? <laughs> that one excuse just keeps going. <laughs> so, um, how long do you want to donate it? Donate it. it? It's too cold. Um, a month. It was a like 70 more. degrees That's, last week. It, but we're supposed to get another freeze. Oh. oh. And so I don't want to like suddenly have short hair and then be cold all the time. Right. Have short right. hair? You know, I used to... They're used to it. I used Hashtag to know excuses, excuses. All right. Well, y'all suck. I used to know a lady. Yeah. I worked with her. Yeah. And she uh, got cancer at like 20 or 30, mm-hmm. lost all her hair, and became a wig maker yeah. uh, using uh, human Donate hair. hair. Yeah. And is really, really good at it. Really? Yeah, like okay. for the first two years that I knew her, yeah. I had no idea that she had no hair. Like her wig That's was cool. spot. I just thought she was an exceptionally well-groomed lady, right? And she was <laughs> clearly. <laughs> but well, she made it. But yeah, yeah. she she pre she prepped that hair. Yeah. Like, yeah, I've, yeah, I've could you imagine how easy getting ready for work in the morning would be? Just put on the wig. Well, you just I pop guess, it yeah. on. Make uh-huh. sure it's clean. Like, is it dishwasher safe? Like, that's my main question. <laughs> just and throw I, some shampoo in there. Yeah, no big deal. I mean, it's human hair, right? So a lot of the rinse, repeat. The dishwasher it has like all those settings. Hair, right? I, guess. I, mean, I mean, you would think, but think about all the hair that you accidentally wash out into your hands when you're washing your hair. Eventually, the, the, the wig's going to go away. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think you actually put the wig in the shower. I don't think that's how it works. Yeah. Right. But you're so, not gonna. I mean, what are you gonna do? I don't know. I don't know. If are you, you gonna to, wash it in the sink? I don't know if you need to. Clean. Dave, I need like it answers. Has, it doesn't get the That's oil true. that it's your actual scalp the gets. Oils. I guess if you're not yeah. running your fingers through it all the time, but yeah, I mean, if you're not a... rolling around in dirt, it shouldn't even <laughs> get washed as often. But you know, maybe you just use some shit dry flies shampoo. up in your hair sometimes. Sometimes yeah. it's shit. Sometimes it's shit. Yeah. Hey, yeah. do you have a wig? Uh, leave us a comment about how you clean that thing. Yeah, please. We're curious. Right. I don't know. I don't, I don't. I have no idea. But yeah, I've. You know, they say you know, like uh, wearing a different hat every day, sort of like someone that takes on a lot of different roles in an occupation. Wears or, a lot of hats. Or wears a lot of hats. Yeah. You know, so I feel like there should be like a reference, like wears a lot of wigs, <laughs> as in like someone who gets to be a different person, like oh, whenever oh. they feel like it. Like, oh, yeah. I want to be. She's a woman who wears. I want to be the wigs. redheaded movie star today. I mean, there's and kind then of tomorrow, already, yeah. I'm going to be like. The professional oh, yeah. librarian yeah. with a bob. He's or a whatever. man who wears many toupees. That's, there's kind of like already the a term for that, but it's, it's more about it's, it's what, a man of many faces. So, yeah. no, a man of many faces. I think is talking about per, uh, like facets of personality. Like you wear different hats whenever you like do different things. Well, like yeah, the, but but the the wig situation is similar to a man of many faces. That's what I think. I could be wrong, be if, especially version. if you had a different character that you assigned to each wig and yeah. like when you had mm. that wig on I think you should I think you should I know <laughs> I, think I would they, I think they just call that a sociopath could be alright yeah I'm comfortable with that, yeah, yeah. that yeah. right. I mean I'm, I'm friends with a lot of them mm. me too <laughs> mm-hmm. so what is it last, last time we talked about how Jason has a new job right Maybe. we recently talked about that yeah we talked I about did, I did like get that. a job I got a new job Whoa! I got out of the restaurant business. Wow! We talked about this yeah, I think we talked. Have we talked about it? Already? We have already talked, we've about, talked about it. Had I actually started at the time? When we I talked don't about believe it? so. Yeah. I think you were I still in your testing. Remember. And now I'm selling insurance. Selling it's a insurance. very interesting job. I bet it is. But it's 
It's got a lot of regulations. Yeah. And those are fun. No. Nope. It's a whole lot of me calling people and them not answering. That's that's what <laughs> that's what insurance is. I'll try calling Justin. He can answer. I are sure you are mean. you cold calling or do you have? Yeah, he texted me. Let's both. be fair. Okay, both. Yeah. All right. Typically, I have you know well, they, they send they send us leads for people who like put stuff in online or whatever, and then uh, we call those people and they don't answer the phone, and then I hit up my friends and like hey. You're a person in the world. You need insurance. Have you tried small businesses that uh, very likely don't have quite enough money or capital to offer insurance to their employees? Like you could go into these small businesses and sort of be like, right. hey, I offer insurance. I know you guys. That's, that's more or less talking about health insurance, though, which is not something I offer. Oh, no? No, we do We do like cars, homes, could you uh, life. Could you leave your insurance card at like a driver's school? Be like, hey, kids. Yeah, probably could. Smart. I can do that. Look hey, at me with smart, the big smart ideas. Yep. Look at the big brain on Kate. <laughs> Did you forget my name? No. You could you could hang out at hospitals and people that almost die. You could sell life insurance to. Uh, I don't if know they that almost their die, they're probably not qualified. Them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but it not, doesn't sound like it's gonna make him a whole lot of money. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so where's That's, the where's the how do you where's the go to? For insurance. Yeah, I know my agent's office is always trying to offer me like these really amazing premium life insurance policies, and I'm like, yeah, it's because I'm not dying anytime soon. Yeah. Don't die. Well, We'd you love to sell you some don't die. <laughs> this thing that, like, just because you're young, this is like, you don't need life insurance now, mm. but there's never a better time to get it than now. That's true. Because it's never cheaper than now. Yeah. Except the, uh, as, as you get older, it's going to get more that expensive. Program, yeah. yeah. But, so. but insurance is a. Um, What's that? A, a business, right? And and they're a business about making money. I mean, it's gambling, is what it is. Yeah, that's all. That's what insurance. That's literally what insurance is. It like especially life insurance is. I bet I'm gonna die, and the insurance company goes, "Bet you don't," and then you give them some money, and next month you realize that they were right. But I feel like that's one of those markets that can't really be destroyed by the economy or whatever. It almost seems like they would receive bailouts or something like that if if all of your big insurance providers just like, oh, a, a horrible natural disaster occurred and all these big insurance providers have to pay out yeah. all of these billions of dollars. I imagine that the government would just step in and bail them all out. I mean, no, no, they that's those losses are write-offs. Mm -hmm. So they just write that off and the taxpayers pay for it. I so the government bails them out through yes. taxation. The, the, the taxpayers yes. bail them out. Taxpayers bail Pretty them much. out. It's not like, oh, no, they're going under. It's like we're going to protect them from ever going under. It's like the, the automotive industry when mm -hmm. uh, they had that huge decline. GMC almost shut down and, yeah. and they had to bail out the automotive industry, Ford the airline industry mm -hmm. uh, after the 9-11 incidents where nobody would fly anymore and you know all yeah. these different small companies went under, all the big ones took some big they checks. Took some hits but yeah and then, then and um, apparently you know you you go back and you read through all these different bailout stuff, even banking bailouts yeah. and you see that like a lot of that money doesn't get appropriately allotted no like i feel like no, when the government to bonuses yeah when the government bails something out it should be used just to like maintain the salaries of their base employees yeah. things like that it shouldn't be used for bonuses for the corporate top yeah echelon like oh we failed but the government stepped in Let's all give ourselves an extra hundred grand this right. year. Right. What about all those people we had to fire? Yeah, they're gone, man. I mean, That's they us. already got fired, right? <laughs> we can't just send them all letters saying, yeah. come on back, can we? Oh, you could, actually. <laughs> it's an email. You could just actually probably close. Yeah. Was that carbon copy? I almost said closed caption. <laughs> it's not the same uh, thing. <laughs> it's not the same thing, guys. No. Carbon copy to just like, boom, everybody we just fired. Probably <laughs> using email. <laughs> I always think about it, though, when my agent calls me. I'm like, man, I could throw myself such a bomb funeral. I would. I'd be like, all right, so this money's going to be allocated to, I don't know, whoever. Mm -hmm. But there's some con contingencies. First, I want to be sent out Viking, st Viking style. Yeah. Like, I want a boat. I want an archer. I want to be set on fire. 
But I also want my ashes mixed in with glitter and blown in the faces of all those who've oppressed me. So I don't know how that's going to work with who, like. Who, do you have a list? Who has oppressed you? Do you have a <laughs> list? Like, I can, I'm sure there's people that have pissed you off. But who's actually oppressed it Kate? It just sounds you know? cool. Pretty white girl. Been getting oppressed her whole life, I see. <laughs> um. All right, Actually, just those who have offended me okay, in general. I agree better. with the Or maybe the, those who offend those who still live. Like, you just carry it around in your pocket, Dave. And the next time some asshole cuts you off, you just get out of your car, you go up to them, and you're like, I just blew my best friend's Kate corpse says hello. in your face. This is from Kate. <laughs> what, the, what is that? It's who is Kate? Kate? They're going to be annoyed right off the bat yeah. because it's glitter. It's the herpes of art supplies. They're not going to roll their window down. Say that. <laughs> That's gonna, what I'm telling you. They're going to they be do, mad. They're roll it down. <laughs> But they're already going to be like, yeah. glitter never comes off. But then they'll be like, wait, this is a corpse? Yep. Like, corpse and glitter. It's a good way to go. Yeah. I'm like a good witch. Just roll it down. <laughs> I'm just going to blow it on your car then. That's going to be there Because it's in my hand and it's getting <laughs> sticky. <laughs> Spray some blue on it. I don't know why I've put so much thought into this. It's like my it's final. It's good to be prepared, I guess. It's I, my final fuck you. I like that <laughs> idea. Would you go uh, like lake? Uh, what body of water would you like to be sent out into? I don't think it matters at that point. I mean, I'm dead. I want fireworks on my boat, though. Ooh. Like, Ooh, me like you go and a, you shoot just... the archer thing, and then it just lights up into... Right, oh. I think by archer thing, then... you mean arrow. I mean, you could shoot the archer <laughs> if, if they're willing. Just, okay, <laughs> compound bow it, yeah. your arrow, and the flaming arrow, and then it just lights up in a sea of fire. See, I get a, a human cannon. But there's always the technicality And an here. archer, right? And the archer has no idea. Yeah. He thinks he's just going to shoot an arrow, right? Yeah, like, What's and this we, cannon we about? We like, don't worry about guy. it. We grab that archer, we set him on fire, we stuff him down <laughs> in the cannon, we shoot the archer yeah. into my corpse boat fireworks. <laughs> but how do we... Sur Separate Archer Corpse versus Kate Corpse, because let's be honest, I don't only want one the Archer matters. to die because that's going to detract <laughs> from and distract. Real... So we need a, Who do a we flame grieve? proof suit. <laughs> so yeah, we'll put them in some kind of a. We'll yeah. put that jelly, that flame jelly. Flame, that jelly. flame mm -hmm. jelly, though. Yeah. You know, that flame jelly. <laughs> all why are you putting those? I mean, so don't then he's worry sitting about on it. Top of my and then it's corpse. his job after he hits the boat to not go unconscious until he has <laughs> rolled out of the boat. <laughs> And the water will, uh, you know, keep oxygen from feeding those fires, yeah. and, and he'll go yeah. out. Or from feeding him oxygen. Also that. Yeah. But, you know, and then he's just got to beeline it. Yeah. It's like because, a... because my boat is exploding with fireworks. <laughs> so, you know, I expect to have to pay him at least like 100, 200 bucks. Well, now we have the same idea, Jason. <laughs> like 200 bucks. And we can't possibly die camp. on We're going to have to day. die at the same time. No, because it'll be like, you know, when two brides share a wedding, and they, like, this is my death. This is my day. Uh, my day. If you die you know, and get this hooked up, I'm going to, on purpose, die. Like, the next day, <laughs> set my funeral on the other side of the lake, and it's going to be more glorious. <laughs> it's funny. You mentioned the two brides on the same day. My mom did that with her sister. They they had their wedding together. No. Not to each other. Because churches like... are expensive. Yeah. All right? So if you just knock out two and two birds, one stone... What are you doing with all these save, birds? Save money. <laughs> Knocking them out with stones. Knocking them out with stones. You know, I, I just, it's like a catch and release. You just sort of sneak up on them, knock them out with stone. Just and then you're up. like, all right, well, they'll wake up pretty soon. <laughs> and be like, ow. Yeah. I'm going to go back to hunting worms. I don't know what that was. Doesn't sound like fun. Because they're birds. I don't think they really think things through. <laughs> you're probably right. Yeah. Dumb birds. So did you guys get that text I sent you earlier? I know you didn't. Because you didn't send it to her. You're only allowed so many texts yeah. a day, though, I thought. Yeah. Yeah, so and I got it. You got it? Yeah, I just didn't say anything back because I didn't want to, you know, You want to overload your, your, your rotary phone. Right, yeah. Mm -hmm. I have the only rotary cell phone. <laughs> only one in existence. Yeah. Yep. And I'm very proud of that fact. Actually, an attachment that you could get for a while. I don't know if they sell it still, but it was like a rotary phone that you could plug into your cell phone in case, you know... Nostalgia, I guess. <laughs> In case you have a situation where you can't use a phone. You know, you just wanted to feel some kind of way. Yeah. I do like the sound that they make. But anyway, so yeah. Jason sent out a text that excluded me. Go on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that sounds about right. Um, excluded? Excluded, discluded, you know. 
I don't. It's there was just, no I'm asking. There was no collusion. Keeps making up words. Go on. Okay. There was no collusion. <laughs> it's like she wasn't um, included. But I I sent it out about uh, about movies from our past. Yep. Because we like movies. Yep. Uh, that we believe mm. deserve a remake, a prequel, or a sequel, mm. and it never got made. Yeah. Uh, I did not have access to the internet, so oh. I couldn't do quite the amount of research that I wanted to do. So I just wrote down a few titles of movies that were in my forethoughts right. while I was pooping earlier. The only you, you you said prequel, sequel, or remake. The only movie I've ever thought where I was like, man, I wish I had a prequel for this was The Purge, and I've talked about that multiple times. Yeah, you have. they're finally doing it, and it makes me very happy. Yes, they it, are. I really they heard want to you? know the logistics behind yeah. that. The I mean, very first Purge. It kind of seems like from the first few videos that maybe it was just a clever way to get rid of the poor and the homeless. Which is exactly what it was. But, you know, what led up to that exactly? Yeah. You're right. Like, what was like, well, you know. There's too many people. We need to many. kill them. How do we kill them? How do we sell it? But we make people be okay. But we're going to kill them. Yeah. So what movies did you think of? Um, well, the first one I thought of, Hudson Hawk. Hudson so you think Hawk? A remake of Hudson Hawk. Um, I was thinking a sequel or remake. Uh -huh. Um, it's, remake is tough because it was Bruce Willie in one of his uh, earlier That's Bruce roles. Bruce Willis for you kids out there. Uh, in one of his earlier roles, in and movie. it was a fun movie. It was an adventure movie where he was like a, a cat burglar yeah. and it's got a lot of Frank Sinatra songs in it because he times all of his cat burgling routines to songs, out yeah. to songs. He knows all these songs last a certain amount of time so if he has a three minute timer that he's got to work off of mm. he just starts singing a three minute song and he yep. knows by the end of it he, he's better, be done. he better be done. Yeah. And it is a great movie. It's got From a lot of nuances. Mid, mid 80s? I want to say late 80s. Late 80s. Okay. Maybe maybe even 90. -ish. I think it was early 90. I want to say it was like 90 or 91. And this yeah. is and this is back when Bruce Willis, Bruce Willis used to be he used to make really funny movies. Mm -hmm. He did he did Hudson Hawk. He did um Well, he started in Moonlighting. He did yep, Moonlighting. Was a Death Becomes Her. A show. Yeah, Death, Death Becomes Her. Yeah. That was a good one. Who was that? That was Meryl Streep and Goldie Hawn. Goldie Hawn. Yeah. And, and, you know, that actually, eh, it might do okay. A Netflix remake of Death <laughs> Becomes Her might work. Yeah. But I, I felt like Hudson Hawk had a lot of potential with its, uh, with the witty writing. It's a lot of, like, snappy one-liners. It's yeah. very up Bruce Willis's alley. Actually, yeah, I could see them doing, like, a, a sequel of that where it's, he has to team up with, like, a younger guy. And this younger guy is trying to do, like... Justin Bieber songs and stuff, and, and just <laughs> like be, shitty see, poppy that's... songs from today, and 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 Willis is still trying to do like, you know, Sinatra and mm -hmm. all that stuff. They could do some some soundtrack yeah. mashups. Yeah. For the for the. This sounds just as terrible as that Die Hard movie. Let's get it made. What Die Hard movie did you find terrible? The one with the sun. Really? Yeah, I liked every Die Hard movie I saw. No, the one with They're the all... sun was kind of like. Out there, and it was also only like an hour and twelve minutes long. Was it really? <laughs> yeah, it was oh. very. That's hyperbole, short. but no, uh, no, no. It was legitimately like an hour and twelve minutes long. Oh, he saw the King James version. <laughs> the King James, New International Standard. Yeah. Um. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I enjoyed it. Hmm. I mean, it's an action movie. Yeah. What's not to like about an action movie? But it, in comparison, you know, if you're a Die Hard fan, if you're a Die Hard Die Hard fan, yeah, uh, then you know it is definitely one of the least. Yeah, like it doesn't. It's you know, it, I, no it way is, compares to. It is Klaus the one I remember the least, certainly. Or, or yeah. Peter Piper, or you know, any of any of the early ones. Now, talking on Bruce Willis, it did make me think. You know, Bruce Willis has come out with a, a lot of really iconic movies mm -hmm. that were kind of one offs that everybody really. You know, clamored for like Fifth Element is another good example. Oh yeah, mm. a sequel to Fifth Element. That'd be great. A yeah, remake could, of Fifth Element, I could see them doing, but I, I don't would. know if I would be a fan of it because yeah. it was so good. It's so exactly. perfect. Like yeah. it's just I don't so think classic. You can remake anything that Bruce Willie was the lead on. I wonder how he feels about you calling him that. He loves Bruce it. Willie. Right? <laughs> He's yeah. a big fan. Hashtag Bruce Willie. 
Um, right down, I guess. But uh, I'm not proud of this. <laughs> <laughs> I know they just made the movie Valerian. Yeah. I would really like them to already remake that because it is actually a really great graphic novel series, and that movie is. Literally painful to watch. They didn't, really they painful didn't do it any justice for it. Is... You. Glad I didn't spend money to watch oh, it. Gosh. Yeah, I haven't seen it. I've heard good, but I've heard. I mean, I've heard it's a beautiful movie. It's beautiful visually. Um, it's just amazing. Yeah. But the storyline, they. I think they just tried to take so much because it's a very long, expansive graphic novel series. There's a lot going on in that world. Yeah. Um, the center of. The, the spaceship that they're on is like the culmination of all the university or universe <laughs> universes is, yeah. universes I don't know why I can't talk today I'm sorry um, so we there's a lot going together. on on this one space station it's like the international kind of almost like UN type deal okay. um, so they're kind of trying to give you a lot of background on a lot of universes as well as fill you in on all the characters at once and it's just a lot of information just too much in the one movie just way too much in the one movie and just really piss poor acting mm. um the female lead they picked had only been in maybe two movies i think prior to this yeah. so her performance is just terrible uh, the male lead he's been and in their a lot chemistry of stuff. Has he? yeah remember, he's been in a lot of stuff but i remember looking like it's looking not at, and the the only thing i remember him being wasn't he didn't he play like Harry Osborn in, in the Amazing Spider-Man? He did. He did. He did. Um, he did. And that's literally all I know him from. He was also in uh, that movie Chronicle. Did you see the movie Chronicle? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. He was Wait, the yes, I did. Chronicle. Okay. Yeah, he was the the dude, the, the bad dude? one. Oh, okay. The bad dude. See, I feel like they, they've been doing that a lot though. Like they take these epic adventures and these epic stories. And they just try and squeeze it into something just so they can like package it and get it out there. Yeah. Because it's like, got enough of a fan base that they know are watch it. that fan base yeah. will pay to see the movie. Well, like uh, Full Metal Alchemist. Mm -hmm. I, I've watched both of the animes, loved both of the animes. I know about the long history of the, of the mangas. And uh, they released a live-action Full Metal Alchemist, Alchemist movie on Netflix. Yeah. Completely Japanese, Japanese actors, the whole nine. This is a, a series, like when you're talking about anime, like 30 minute episodes, you're talking like six or seven seasons, 20 episodes a piece. Mm. And they're trying to fit all of this into like two hours and 10, two hours and mm -hmm. 15 minutes. Kind of like Airbender. Yeah. Where you uh, try, and, try and take the, that the entire that epic and story and compress it into And I believe, I think, I think we talked about this off, off mic uh, last week or week, well, week before last, yeah. we were talking about. You know, is so many smaller story arcs and one very large, like overarching storyline. Yeah. What are they really going to play with? And they they just kind of like did you, did rape you watch the this whole thing. Movie? Yeah, I watched it. Yeah. I watched it. And uh, I mean the yeah. the special effects were meh. I feel like that uh, that Al looked really good. I feel like Al Alphonse looked awesome, um, and they got the movements down and everything right. Uh, but there wasn't enough action, no. and they really just, they kind of, like, squeezed in this whole, like, political conspiracy that was present in the anime, and they just they, they just yeah. twisted it up, and it ended in a really weird spot, and it's kind of like they took that overall story, mm -hmm. and they're like, we're going to take this part, and this part, and we're going to stop it right here. Don't worry about whatever happens to the rest. And we're going to take a few of these little storylines and shove them in there. And it yeah. almost didn't make sense to me. Like, when they redid like, Valyrian, that made sense. It was like, okay, you were taking um, the original medium, which is a graphic novel, mm -hmm. and transferring over a movie. Okay, that's fine. But with, like, you know, um, Death Note, for example, Note. Attack on Titan, they made a movie of that. I've not seen it yet. Seen or, it yet. in this case, Airbender. These are already shows... <laughs> And things you can watch. So why do you need to improve upon it with a live action? Well, I mean, some people it's not like going to work. some mm -hmm. people like that live action thing. I do find that animes do not translate mm -hmm. translate well into live action. I don't know. I haven't seen um, Ghost in the Shell. I'm not sure if I want to. I'm not sure if I'll be disappointed. I expect that I probably will be. I feel like the only graphic novel that I've ever seen, like really masterfully adapted into a film, was Watchmen. Yeah, was Watchmen job. was a was very, a good job, very good job translating that. I'd like to material. see a Cowboy Bebop. 
Yeah. Cowboy yeah. Bebop. But I mean, see, now that source material is a lot smaller. It's and, not, you're not talking about and it's more, hundreds of hours. And it's more like kind of a character driven piece anyway. Exactly. So you as can long play as with you the cast story. it properly, yeah. Cowboy Bebop could be amazing. Yeah, you can play with the story. However, I feel like with the American binge watcher, mm -hmm. what, what we've become today with our Netflix and chill, like. There's really no reason to push these things into movie form when mm -hmm. we will consume them and be happier about it if you break it up into episodes. Yeah. I anyway. feel like long form. Like somebody was talking about um, like remaking Harry Potter. And I'm like, Already? no, yeah, I mean, that didn't yeah. make my list. No. <laughs> but uh, like remaking Harry Potter. And it's like, all right, you could remake Harry Potter. If you're remaking it in movies, mm. it needs to be like. 30 years from now before you even think about doing it. Yeah. But However, effects... that Netflix binge watcher me was like, now if they came out with a season for every year he was at a Hogwarts and put it on Netflix, I would binge I watch the fuck out of that. Especially if it were universal parallel. Even take Where like it... you're not following boring ass Harry Potter, but you're following Different one of the cool Different aspects of the world. People. Like yeah. maybe, you know, you take a trip to Durmstrang or what's yeah. the what's the Like show off the universe. Il Ilvermorny. Is the one in Ilver America. in America and maybe follow those or different Ilver story Morning. arcs. Or oh, even, yeah. ooh, you know what I would love to see? Because they touch on it hmm. a little bit. Young Dumbledore. Yeah. Like, uh, you, you read a lot about him in uh, book seven, I believe, with his whole conflict, Dumbledore versus... Hmm. Um, uh, Grindelwald. Grindelwald, mm -hmm. but I would love. They're doing that to in the see... new uh, Fantastic Beasts. That's true. Mm. But apparently, they're doing Grindelwald and uh, they are uh, they're tweaking that because in the in the books it mentions that there there was like a love between these two characters, mm -hmm. and they are doing away with that storyline. Oh, in the, in the book, no. they're, yeah, they're taking away the, the the homosexual aspect of it. That a lot of people are. I find think that touched it's so many people, and it's so yeah, that's very like relevant. Pulling the Magneto Professor X. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, you know, friendship. Yeah, apart in the X Men or whatever. Well, it's it's pretty crucial to the story. But yeah. Yeah. who knows? Who knows what they're gonna do? But like, the idea of binge watching that, and I think you're right, and I think we're gonna keep seeing more of that, where they're gonna take these concepts, and as you know, movie attendance drops mm -hmm. and streaming continues to go on the rise, they're gonna start putting their their money in things that are actually gonna keep our attention for a while. Like. Yeah. What I think is a good example is I look at Marvel because we talk about Marvel all the time. Mm -hmm. It's relatable to our audience. But speaking of which, of which the new Jessica Avengers Jones. movie. Well, yeah, Jessica Jones it, it, coming out very soon. And that She's moved uh, up in date. That moved up tomorrow. like uh, Is it tomorrow? It's yeah. tomorrow. You'll, so by, by the time, time you see this, you'll already have You should no. already been to watch Jessica Jones. It's the 8th, isn't it? Yeah, today's the 6th. Oh. Today was the 6th, yeah. Oh. Yeah. It still um, is right now. But also, It's on Friday. The new Avengers movie is coming out like a week or two earlier than originally anticipated. Yep. The but next like, one is uh, Ant-Man and Wasp, right? No, the next one is Avengers. Really? I thought Ant-Man and Wasp was next. It's Infinity, right? Infinity War. But yeah. like mm -hmm. but like look at look at like all right, um Daredevil, mm -hmm. okay? And then you compare it to Thor. I know a lot more about Daredevil now. Like I'm more emotionally invested into all of the characters and the story yeah. involving Love Daredevil because I've had 13 hours of this mm -hmm. as opposed to Thor where I've had Two and a half. You had the second season. Now I have 26 hours of Daredevil compared to the max nine I have with Thor. Right. I feel more of a kinship because that's going to keep drawing me to those properties. They're going to keep oh, coming yeah. out with these bingeable shows. Stranger Things. Like all of those shows that they can just push out a season. Know that the whole world is going to binge it in oh, a few yeah. days. And then now they are like the hype of the world. Like mm -hmm. you remember when Stranger Things came out this last year when the second season came out? That's all the internet was about it for was like four huge. and a half days. Yeah. It was just nothing but Stranger Things. Mm -hmm. There's still memes that circulate, oh. you know, mm -hmm. like. But just, it just it stays with you for that much longer. It's not like going and catching a movie. You're investing your time and your energy into these things. And you're looking forward to the next October mm -hmm. when the new Stranger Things is going to come out. Absolutely. You know? And it's a lot more tolerable than that bullshit that they did with the Harry Potter movies and with the like the Lord of the Ring movies, where it's like, mm -hmm. all right, here's one. Wait a year for the other one. Yep. Wait a year for the other one. Here's part one. Part two comes out in a year. Yeah. Here's part one. Here part two comes out in a year. And, and I was all over very disappointed with Deathly Hallows for, you know, as long as it took to develop and being two whole movies. Mm -hmm. I just... 
left something to be desired, especially the first movie. There's some really sentimental, sweet scenes. Like my favorite scene, I think, I think it's in the first movie, is where Hermione and Harry are dancing yeah. to the old beat-up radio. There's just something very sweet and touching about that scene. But for the most part, that movie is dull. <laughs> yeah, it, it was a build-up movie. And, you know, so you, you accept that. You're like, okay. But then you get to the battle and they just rush certain aspects of it. Some things didn't come off organically to me. Yeah. There were details. Uh, the fourth movie really angers me. The third movie really angers me. I don't know. <laughs> I, I think that's your, like... Uh, you, that you're angry? If we Are knew you angry? <laughs> what we knew now about Netflix binging then, how mm. much better Harry Potter could have been. Yeah. But I, I do agree that they could definitely expand on that universe. Oh, and, there's and not so just much room. through mm -hmm. their movies. Mm -hmm. uh, because you put... Movies have so much production and so much build. And then you have to spend all this money and hype and advertising. And you're always competing with some other movie that yeah. found out you were going to make this. So they made a competing movie. Right. And, and you're splitting your box office. But with Netflix or Hulu or whatever, like... Yeah. You can watch it all. You you know, like, oh, I'm just going to commit Sunday to season three of Harry Potter, and then mm -hmm. I'll watch the, the whatever and I wonder, next weekend. I, wonder I mean, like, actually do that after, after these Fantastic Beasts movies come Because there's supposed to be, what, four of those or mm -hmm. something? Mm -hmm. um, it, it, it would be a great idea for them to go to Netflix. I mean, Marvel did it, and it's working out fantastic for them. Yeah, I mean, like... Just yeah, filler. Just, yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, it's, it's something to keep our attention in the medium where, like... I know, we all know, they did not make nearly as much money on those 13 episodes of Daredevil mm -hmm. as they did on an Avengers movie. No. Obviously not. They didn't spend nearly as much money either, but the production value in shows, especially shows on like Netflix and Hulu, where they're, base, they're not having to base it off of how many sponsors they can get. They're just right. like, I'm going to put this much money into this project and see what comes out. You're getting high production value. Stranger mm -hmm. Things, Altered Carbon incredibly high production value. It oh, felt yeah. like you were watching a film for the most part. So it's just going to keep going further and further and further. I it's going to keep long-form entertainment. It's more enjoyable viewing experience in a lot of ways. I know for me... You can stop when, when you want. Yeah, you can stop when you want. And, you know, I think there's more opportunities to kind of build a community around it. I know for me, when Stranger Things Season 2 came out, mm -hmm. we all got together at one of my friend's house. He put up a big projector and we all wore our little Stranger Things shirts. We all brought snacks. We all brought, like, Stranger Things-themed snacks. Like, I brought Demogorgon dogs. They were just hot dogs. Yeah. But I put, like, weird food coloring on them and, you know, made them look kind of strange. Ooh. So we all just did fun little things like that. And it was just, like, cheesy and cute. But I'm going to remember that. Yeah much more fondly than I would remember a trip to a movie. Like, oh, I, I saw that movie. I don't remember who I saw it with. Hugs. Versus, you know, oh, yeah, so-and-so was there, so-and-so was there. We did right. this, that. The other, we stopped and talked about things. Mm -hmm. Where you can't do that in a movie theater. You're, you'll for sure get kicked out. Mm -hmm. yeah. You can't bring your Demogorgon dog. <laughs> <laughs> no one's What's in your purse, ma'am? It's not a bunch of uh, themed, appropriately <laughs> snacks, if that's what you're asking me. Yeah. Or a two liter of Coke. That's absurd. And That's definitely not what that is. More comfortable. It's an automatic it's just, rifle. You know. <laughs> Whoa. I'm, I'm getting. Sorry. I went dark. I went dark with it. I apologize. I could stain my PJs. I mean, I could do that at the movie theater too, but I'm gonna get judged a little bit. Yeah. Also, the movie theater's not as comfortable as my Don't own couch. Me. Granted, True. you can pay twenty dollars for those fancy job. reclining seats, but mm. you just spent twenty dollars to sit in a reclining seat for two hours. You go on and off. That's true. Yeah. So, movie number two. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no, Just this is. I was hoping reel to, me back in. <laughs> to inspire conversation. That's why y'all invite away. me to this thing. <laughs> Hancock. Hancock. Big Willie style. Hand to cock. Hand on your cock. And my mouth remake, on my mic. Remake, remake, prequel, sequel. Yeah, remake, prequel, or sequel. I think um, a prequel would be pretty interesting. I think a sequel would be pretty interesting. Yeah. I don't really feel. I mean, it could be remade, but it's still pretty current. Yeah, it's current enough that a remake would just and it's not be that stupid. classic of a movie that people would even give a shit about a remake. Yeah, but I also feel you like you could it, garner more interest with a prequel or a sequel or a remake. They're like, what this shit again? I feel like it came out a little bit uh, earlier than it should. Like a lot of the other superhero style movies, I feel like they came out in a time when. 
superhero movies were definitely progressing, mm-hmm. but it wasn't at the forefront of American. I think Hancock's problem was is that it misrepresented itself. Because when, it was a love story? When I started watching the trailers and things like that, that like, you know, garnered any interest in seeing the movie, it was like, oh, it's a drunk, rude, alcoholic superhero. Like, this is going to be funny. Like, it yeah. was yeah. presented to me as like mm-hmm. a, a, a superhero That's comedy about like a drunken, worthless superhero. And you got the complete. It became a love a, story. It became a love story. A convoluted, very a convoluted love yeah. story. But you only got about like eighteen minutes tops of like of what you drunk, promised. obnoxious <laughs> Will Smith superhero, and then it's like I'm reformed. Now I'm in prison. Now I'm out, and I'm falling in love with Charlie Theron, and Jason Bateman's there for some reason, <laughs> and like then it just became like a. No, a I do a, love a Jason shit. Bateman. Wait. I do love Jason Bateman, <laughs> and I love Charlie Theron, and I love Will Smith. It's not a great movie. You should all come on the show. And that's why I feel like uh, a prequel would be really good because then you could kind of get more focus on the drunk antics Mm -hmm. of a superhero that just doesn't give a fuck. Are you going to go Will Smith or are you going to go somebody else? I mean, I would go Will Smith. He's doing Netflix movies now. That's true. I I feel like, hey, man... How do you feel about Hancock? And he'd be like, "Well, it's yeah, I kind of I, awesome. I hoped it would go in a different way, you know. I don't. I mean, it did better than After Earth, though. So yeah, but that was for his boy, right? Like, it wasn't was, After Earth? For... I don't know who it was for, but it wasn't for the American audience. Yeah, I felt like he <laughs> produced that for his son. Uh, but but I feel like Hancock has a lot of potential. I yeah. agree. Uh, that it... that's why I was so disappointed. Right, and so let's correct that disappointment. Yeah. Pull out a prequel, give us the more of what we wanted from the Hancock movie. A little less yeah. Theron, <laughs> a little more Smith. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> every, and, this is total, total, Every time I think of a movie that promised me what you know something else, I think of that movie we watched one time called Funny People. No, uh, Drunk People. Sorry, Drunk People. Remember that one? The and one where terrible. the the guy is, has a beard in the yeah. on the front or whatever, and it's and it like does it in it's a light hearted comedy yeah. about relationships. Yeah. It's and then built it's... as a comedy, and there's nothing funny in the movie. Mm. Mm. Not a not a single thing. The only like, funny thing is that like the dude has a beard or something on the cover, and then n- the character never has. I think a it was beard. the other way around. Was the other way? Like, around? Yeah, on the cover. He was clean no shaven on the he was cover. Clean shaven yeah. in the cover. The whole movie he's got a beard or whatever. Yeah. So that was like the and funniest. Like you weren't even sure, like. Is that the guy that's on the cover? <laughs> right. But it, it was billed as a comedy. Jer- Jace, or Jason and I went and got this at uh, Redbox. I like, remember you talking. Oh about yeah, this. this looks good. This you know, we, you know it's got. Uh, it had uh, Jason Bateman in it, didn't it? <coughs> it had uh, Adam Scott. Not, not Jason Bateman. Yeah. Um, Adam Scott, Kristen Wiig, I think was in there too. No, neither of those people. Um, it Are had you sure? Anna Kendrick, um, Olivia Wilde. Yes, Olivia um, Wilde. The Jake guy Johnson. From, the guy from uh, who? Jake Johnson. Yes, Jake Johnson, and the guy from Office Space. Um, whose name I can never remember. Ron Livingston. That's the one. Yeah. Um, and it was and all funny actors. Olivia Wilde, not necessarily a funny actor, but she has done comedy. Mm-hmm. And she has. and we're like, this should be good, and it was not. Mm-hmm. It's just misrepresentation. It was. It's like, like going to take like a sip of a drink, thinking that it's water. And it's vodka. It was like watching or taking those a four sip of Coke actors. and realizing it's root beer. It's not that you hate root beer. It's just that I wasn't expecting fucking root beer. Yeah, I was expecting this thing, and you gave me this other thing, and now I can't enjoy that thing. Yeah, it's like if if you rented a movie from Redbox and it was just four actors doing talkie box, just yeah. sort of sitting around a table, <laughs> like just jawing about bullshit, and then two hours goes by, and you're like, that was supposed to be a comedy. <laughs> <laughs> and didn't work. I didn't laugh a time. There yeah. was no LOLs for me. I'd no. like a redo of Electra. I know I won't get one probably now that you know she's got her um, cameos in Daredevil. Now that whatnot. she's black sky. Yeah. Now that yeah. she's black guy. I <laughs> no. I was so disappointed with the Electra movie with Jennifer yeah. Garner. That was because you know as a kid I, she was one of my first favorite superheroes and I just got so excited. Yeah. I was I was so disappointed with the fall. Daredevil movie she was in first. Yeah, that was bad too. So, <laughs> we won't talk about that. I was honestly surprised she got her own movie after 
I was surprised. I was they disappointed that the last Ben Stiller name was Nachos. Is a, or not Ben Stiller, I'm sorry. Ben Affleck is a superhero again. Did they Nachos. not learn? Did they not learn? No. Sorry, Ben Affleck. You can't be Batman. Your kid was right. No, but he's still Batman. Mm. <laughs> he's, he's making that Batman money. I don't know why I keep trying here. He's got a he's got a closed tilt it, tilt back. Oh. So uh, movie number three. Okay. Caught okay. on camera. Movie number three. Movie number three. Push. <gasps> Did you guys see Push? Yes. Yeah, yes. With, with Dakota Fanning. With Dakota Fanning and Captain America. I'd like America. a prequel, a sequel, and a remake. All Here's the thing about Push. Mm -hmm. Push came out around this around the same time. As Jumper, Jumper mm -hmm. and Limitless, mm -hmm. they, they and were I all competing with each other. I always thought they would be awesome if if that was like a new a superhero single, thing. single universe, like a new universe, <laughs> like that's not part of the comic series or anything. It's just its own thing. And I was like, like a guy this who would be jump. amazing if these things were together. Yeah, mm -hmm. I I loved Push. I thought Push had a great concept. I was just I loved a lot of the ideas. Mm -hmm. I loved a lot of the ideas. The execution I felt like was not needed a little bit more. It, it left some to be desired. Mm -hmm. Not that I didn't like Chris Evans, it, but it definitely he's played had a, a lot. huge open ending. That yeah, was huge like, open. We could do a lot with this, but we're not. I ever. thought <laughs> the casting though, a lot of it was on point. Oh yeah, I, I, I did too. You know, I loved like the way that they start. They started breaking it down for you, like it's its own little universe. It's not like oh, this person has that power and this person has it. But like, no, these are called pushers. And these are called watchers, watchers, and, you know, bleeders, and, and, yeah, sniff, and like, sniffers. Yeah, They kind of, they started categorizing all of these different abilities. You're like, oh, as though this was going oh, to be a Oh shit! Like this is cool. Like I would be interested in seeing you know, how this I plays think that out. Would I, play I relate to this kind of cycle as a Netflix yeah. show. That yep. would translate beautifully. That would be to fantastic. That it would I be great so. in a Netflix show. And you could probably still get, get the, the code of fan. All right, you're not going to get Captain America. I need somebody in this room right now to give me an idea. For movie that would not be better as a Netflix series. <laughs> uh, yeah, I can't think of one. I didn't think. I, didn't think so. uh, I think some things, you know, are succinct and are okay the way they are, like kids' movies, for instance. Go on, give me one. You don't really need to expand upon a kids' movie. They've got like a nice beginning and they've got a nice end. Like, I'm sorry, when Disney tries that anytime, like they're like, Lilo and Stitch is such a great movie. Let's make a show out of it. <laughs> No, yeah. no, 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 no. The show was still pretty good. Uh, no, 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 no. That's no. not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about, like, take, like, Beauty and the Beast, okay? No. I you, have to, as much as I love Beauty and the Beast, I, I just don't it, mess with my Disney. Like, I like right, that you're, nice you're, two you're saying don't mess with it, but are you telling me you wouldn't like to see, you know, an hour episode of getting to know Belle and her father and all the towns? No, they did that. I'm going to be and honest. An hour episode? No, I wouldn't. I think of that's one of those where I would say, don't touch my Disney movies, leave them movies. I think I prefer that medium, that nice, you know, that beginning, that rise and climax, that problem, that nice, solid, resolute end. It's just a um, nice storybook like, version. Like you were saying, a lot of, like, the the Pixar, like, kid movies, like, like I could sit down with, like... A nephew or something and watch what? cars but i would not no. binge watch 10 episodes no. of and cars i love and, you know, there's a, disney you I, might I, not but there uh, are people out there who would a lot of kids out there who would love that but, but see like for me i think shows. i don't want my kids yeah. binge watching <laughs> I, I think for me like the allure of the binge watch show is like a complete exploration of that world yeah, yeah. like you get to know molt like many many characters. You get to like learn all of these different personalities. Mm -hmm. Then all of the ins and outs of that universe. Like, I don't think it translates. Altered Carbon everything. would not have worked as a yeah. movie. It would not have worked as a movie. It would have seemed like a it jumbled mess. It would have flopped because a nobody knew anything about it, mm -hmm. and like the themes were kind of like sort of. Varied and basic, but you you see a lot of the themes in Altered Carbon yeah. and a lot of other things. So it wouldn't be like a come pay twenty dollars and watch to this. Be confused. Yeah. To be like kind of like uh, no. two hours is not enough to grasp what is going on in yeah. this world. Yeah, and I you still think, like um, even after that two hours, you still be missing like all of the little minutia that they throw yeah. out and let you let you in on the first Spanish boy band. <laughs> yeah, the minutia. minutia. Yeah. I do think that some mm. things stay better as movies like most Disney movies. Although I will, like, I will say Tron. I would love to have a more expanded universe for Tron. That'd be cool. 
Because Which, I just fell in love with the Tron universe. They did make a in video game movies. about it. Um, yeah. Mm. which I never finished. I don't know if you did. I didn't even know that was a game. <laughs> no, I gave up after like the That's first news part of it. To me. Yeah. They put it out not that long ago after the after the new movie came out. Mostly just more for like an extended game. soundtrack cuz the whole Tron, Tron soundtrack is just it's dope. Yeah. <laughs> how how what is it? Shh, it's dope. Shh, oh. it's Shit's dope. lit. <laughs> <laughs> Is it, is I it? never feel comfortable listening to it in my car, though, because I have, like, a 1998 Honda Accord. It hasn't been washed in a year. It's missing Not a, a mirror. <laughs> no. It's, it was a lovely car before I got to it. There you go. It's got, you know, a jumper-cabled hood on. So I listen to Tron, this, like, high-tech album <laughs> in my shit car, and I'm like, uh-huh. B- bungee cord. Hood. I can imagine. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> it's, it's, my, it's, it's hooked to the today. battery, so that way we, when the car dies, she can just... <laughs> Yeah. Get a jump <laughs> right off the bat. She didn't have to hook anything up. Right. Let's I don't go. Know. She just leaves the jumper able. I didn't have my nap today, up. and therefore my brain's not at full no. capacity. But uh, nice. Looper. Looper was one of those. Uh, Looper. That was, really good. Good. that was a good movie. Uh, and I'm In Time to think. was another one that I think would be good mm. to expand that on. Was, that was Timberlake, mm. right? Yep. Yep. Where everybody had the. A Timberlake and Safe Read. Uh, was that Repo Man? Wait, was In Time the one um, with uh, Matt Damon and the? No, nope. mm-hmm. it it had Christian Bale, didn't it? Wasn't what? he the? What am I thinking Wasn't he the of? cop? Who was the cop? In the, what? In In Time. In Time, the was... cop that dies at the end. Spoiler. Spoiler for that movie that came out ten years ago. Yeah, I don't remember who the cop was. I don't know. There was a, a cop that's chasing him because, like, he, he gets all this time from this rich guy, like, in the very beginning of the movie, who's going to kill himself. And he's like, here, take my million minutes or whatever. Oh, uh, yeah, I don't remember the, who, the, who the guy was. I, it, it, I, know I Vincent feel Carthizer like it was, was a bad guy. Christian Bale or somebody along yeah, those lines. Sense. Some You're trench coat wrong. wearing motherfucker. <laughs> um, then you, Repo Man was, what, Jude Law, Forrest Whitaker? Yeah. And that, that had, like, that crazy kind of twist ending. Uh, Ooh, what a twist. I kind of enjoyed uh, where you're like, oh, half the movie was not real. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. That's awesome. Yeah. It's just what I like to see. My whole life is a lie. Uh, Jumper, you mentioned Jumper, yeah. which was uh, with... Uh, Aiden one Christensen. Of, one, of, one of Sammy Jack's crazy roles where yeah. he gets to play uh, a weird eccentric. Mm-hmm. I know he loves playing. He uh, loves playing those eccentrics. Eccentric bad guys. <laughs> like in the spirit, you saw Sam Jack in the spirit. Or uh, octopus. I never actually saw that movie. Was that where he had all the clones? Yeah. Like the the Down stuff. syndrome clones oh, or whatever. God. Uh, he had the clones. Yeah, I'll stick with that. Attack of the clones. Yeah, he was, and they were he was the mentally reduced. Like I think yeah, I would they were love to see um, okay. Bill Willingham's Fables made into a bingeable show. That'd be cool. That I don't would. know if you've ever seen those, the, read mm. any of those books. It's it's a graphic novel series based on... A graphic novel a, a, series? So, essentially, the, the fairy tales came to real life in like, current times. Okay. Um, All right. They uh, left the Enchanted Forest or whatever and came here. All right. More yeah, or less, right? They basically had to... Um, because of some sort of antagonist or being that has taken over their lands and is literally consuming them. Magical conflict force, got um, it. So they end up here, and it's yeah. almost kind of reminiscent of Once Upon a Time, but, but a way yeah. darker Yeah, I was about to say, it's darker spin. Like that, They're living in the dark. seedy parts of New York City, and they have um, this glamour network that they use to blend in with us, like, you know... Like, the three little pigs obviously need something to glamorize themselves into humans, because if we saw, you know... Three little pigs. Anthropomorphic yeah. pigs walking around, it'd be a bit disconcerting. Yeah. So, um, but there's Big B Wolf, and he's uh, the big bad wolf, and in this new world, he's trying to be a good guy now, and um, he's the sheriff of the town, and... He's he, trying not to kill everybody he meets. He's trying not to kill everybody he meets while also keeping all of the fables safe. And it, it's just really interesting. There's this is a really Once great... Upon a Time, the, the show? Or... No, no so once... it's, it's similar to that except much darker. Yeah, um, it's called is... Fables. Yeah. There's a really good video game spinoff of it called The Wolf Among Us, which I highly recommend. It's on PC. It's a Telltale game, right? It's Telltale, so similar yeah. to the people who made Walk... Actually, the people who made Walking Dead. Yeah. And Batman and all yeah, the other Telltale games. Several of those. Beautiful game. The unfortunate part is they just don't release the episodes... 
yeah. very quickly. Um, and, you know, it's very much choice-driven, so the story really is going how you want it to, but I just think it would be an amazing show. That'd be really cool. Oh. I'm, glad, I'm glad you brought it up, because you, earlier you said something about, like, the only graphic novel you can think of that was made into a good movie is Watchmen, and I've, I've seen so many more. Uh, v for Vendetta. Mm. That's a good one. 300. I love V for Vendetta. Um, Vendetta. There's another one I was thinking of a second ago. I can't remember right now, but remember, um, remember. The you know, there's been several that, that have done really well. As, right. As I mean, I, I'm thinking like this is just from my perspective in terms mm. of like a faithful adaptation because I read them both. I never read V for Vendetta. I guess more specifically, it was pretty, it was um, anime shows. Yeah. Haven't made been. Yeah. Made like think think about the Dragon Ball Z movie. Oh yeah. I think there's more than one. They're all shit. They were all shit. And it's terrible for, for instance, with Death Note, I mm. didn't know anything about the anime prior to oh. watching the Netflix mm -hmm. show. Had no idea. So that was my first exposure, and I was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> it's Why is this guy just consuming apples like it's nobody's business? And so I remember shit-talking it to Jackie, and she was like, oh no, there's an anime that this is based off of that's really good. I'm like, well, how good can it be? But she showed it to me. It's amazing. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. It's like, like, I watched the anime first. Like, I... Watched the anime. And I can only imagine how disappointing that is as a fan. I loved the anime, and then I started watching the movie, and I'm like, all right, well, Willem <laughs> Dafoe as the Shinigami is working for me, kind of. <laughs> he has the face, he gets it a little bit, and everything else was just like... Garbage. Terrible. But like, all right, let's take this really popular Japanese anime. We're going to take the main character, his name's uh, Light Yagami... Uh, let's make it a light mm, fucking Turner. I don't know. Uh, and then we're gonna make his dad a sheriff. Yeah, not like he was in the... Yeah, we'll just... Let's just change the whole fucking thing. And they did. <laughs> and it was not good. Yeah. Like, as a standalone movie, knowing nothing else about any of the anime, any of the comics, whatever, it's tolerable. Having any sort of background knowledge on what it's about, you want to, like, poke your eyes. I yeah, wouldn't say that either. I wouldn't say it was tolerable. I remember watching it, and I had the flu, and the only reason I didn't change it is because I was so sick. You just didn't feel like And I was in my comfy spot. I'd finally aligned yeah. the heating blanket with my body so that I would just not die. And I was like, I would the, love to reach the remote and change this. The only that's character that I, I liked. X-Men 3. So yeah. X-Men 3, I felt, was a tolerable movie. It was a shit X-Men movie. Yeah. It was just so bad. But if you watched it knowing nothing about comic books at all, you'd be like, all right, I get it. What was the name of the um, of the guy who was pursuing him in, in Death Note? It's like L? a letter. L. That's yeah. what it was. I thought that the guy who played L in the movie had the voice down. He had the voice right. I thought he was an overall okay actor. He was an he was an okay actor. The voice was there, like the voice and the cadence mm -hmm. from the American voice actor who dubbed his his voice in the uh, anime. They they were very meshed, but I didn't care for anything else about him. No, because like it, those are characters that you really needed to develop, that you really need to like get to know. I would have much rather seen a live action Death Note series or the guy who as plays opposed to that movie Light Turner. Like when he um, forgive me the. The, the big monster guy. guy? Yeah. Uh, the name? Shinigami. Yeah, the Shinigami. Yeah. I forget his name. Uh, 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 Ryuk. When he initially counts or initially encounters Ryuk, he's just ah like that. Oh like, shit! It's just the worst. Like I'm surprised right now. In case you like, <laughs> he might as well have said that. I'm feeling surprised. I to have like seen you here. It, it almost seemed like the this director got a phone call so from forced. from like the next sound stage over, like. Hey, dude, just keep it down. We're shooting a quiet scene, so don't let him get too loud. So, ah! Yeah, I'm ah, scared! I'm surprised. <laughs> and he almost, like, looks around for confirmation. Like, really? Is Does that this, good? Did we get it? Good? Did like? we get it? Should I do it again? Did we get it? And they were like, oh, we only have so many cuts. This is very low budget. Yeah. Like, this will have to do. Mm. Uh, another uh, <laughs> movie that I wrote down on my list moments ago. Who framed Roger Rabbit? Yeah. It's true. He wrote it there. Yes. It was, that was a great movie, and I would love I to see to, more of that world. Yeah. Prequel, sequel, agree. remake. Don't care. Not a re not a remake. Not a remake. No, I'd a like remake. to see a yeah. I think a remake. I think a remake too. Mm. I think I'm that they could, to agree. they could. I think it's oh, time for the, the the technology to catch up with it because yeah. it was a very technologically driven film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think they could definitely up the animation level. Maybe and add some the, new. I mean, there's the so many more characters. characters. I mean, you could do that. I just don't think it would have the same 
feel as because the, first the one. movie was specifically designed around the that separation between the real people mm -hmm. and the toon world so having them be more uh you know 32 bit as compared to the 1080 or whatever of the human was necessary i think for the the separation yeah. Mm -hmm. of of the the tune world from the real world. Well, of course. And if we lifted it up as well as we could, you wouldn't really be able to tell the tune world. Sure you could. From the fake I, world. I've you? watched Family Guy in 1080p. Yeah. And if you took an image of Peter Griffin and put it next to you, I wouldn't confuse Peter Griffin for a no. human person. Nope. <laughs> like he he's he's just a high def crisp version of black outlines I mean, and peach color. I'm it's, just saying, as as they kept it Roger just Rabbit cell shading plus and like Rick like and that. Morty in yeah. there somewhere just thrown in a cameo. Oh, if you I throw would. Rick and Morty in there. Woo! Why? Whoa. I don't know. God damn it. I got excited. Uh, I'm calling it on that one. That's oh, the end of the show. Just, We're actually can't. at time. Yeah. Yeah. Can't. But yeah, who framed Roger Rabbit? Uh, uh, Hudson Hawk, Hancock, Push. If you haven't seen necessary. these four movies, I don't regret well, we're it. We're probably not friends. I know you don't. No. No. So just to let you know, check them out though. Yeah, check them out. At They're your local library. Movies. Everyone I mean, agreed Hancock's with me until that moment. List, but... Yeah, Hancock. Uh, watch it for its potential. <laughs> watch it for how good it could have been. Yeah. Not for how good it actually is. Don't no. let any of this <laughs> elevate your hopes. As so, to the quality of these films, these are just amazing concepts. You'll be disappointed. So today I learned that. Uh, Kate is not above demeaning herself by dabbing. Oh. Nope. <laughs> nope. Kate, what'd you learn today? I'm never good at this. Someone come back to me. All right. Justin, what'd you learn today? I learned that uh, Kate wants to be cremated on a river mm -hmm. in a boat with a fire arrow. Mm -hmm. So that's what I drew right there. Yeah. You're also yeah. missing the other part. Okay. It's got to be blended with glitter afterwards. Yep, got to be blended with glitter and thrown in people's faces. I can't draw glitter. You could so sure try. I'll, I'll throw a sparkle dot on there, too, but that's <laughs> about as good as it's going to get. Jason, what'd you learn? I learned not to fuck with Kate's Disney movies. Yeah. No. Don't fuck with them. Don't do it. She likes them the way they are. Yep, they came out perfect, and that's how they're going to stay. Yeah, Disney made them exactly amazing. as they were intended. All right, Kate, what'd you learn? We gave you so much time. Today I learned that Make something up. the next <laughs> Fantastic Beasts movie will elaborate more on my Dumbledore Grindelwald. Could you say it in the microphone? Fantasies. So no. <laughs> but that he will not be gay and that I am very sad about that. I yeah. also learned a lot about myself <laughs> and the other way others perceive me. All right. Justin, we got hashtags? Yungledore. I got a few. Uh, the first one I Ooh, have that's is... that's a good one. Hashtag Yungledore. I've got a hashtag excuses, excuses. Mm -hmm. And hashtag Bruce Willie. And now hashtag Yumbledore. Yungledore. <laughs> I like Yumbledore. I'm sorry. Yungledore? I, I thought you said Yumbledore. Oh, Yumbledore? Like, mm, yummy. All yummy, right. Dumbledore. <laughs> all right. Well, now we all have more insight into Kate's <laughs> life. Well, thank, thanks to my guests for showing up tonight as they sometimes my do. My guests. Thanks to our studio audience of one. Yeah. Here. Hey, we appreciate you. <laughs> our live studio audience. Live studio audience. <laughs> she was and throwing and hand you. signals, just yeah. like <laughs> we uh, had somebody in the booth. Yeah, we had and somebody. We didn't. We didn't. We didn't yell at him. Not once. Not once. Hey. Uh, all right. <laughs> oh, we got it. <laughs> Maybe next time we get an applause. Yeah, we'll see. Screen or a ha ha, and Jackie can just just a light those, like in a ninety-six com. She's just like, yeah. ha -ha -ha -ha. Now listen, she, she's already been on the show. She just doesn't know it. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, well she the camera's turned towards her the whole time. <laughs> oh, we need a laugh track. No, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> I think it'd be such a great idea, Dave. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.